Hi everyone, this is Kiwi G, and I'm back with another artist video for you guys. And um, this is going to be regarding background, so I'm going to give you three tips about how to start doing backgrounds. Now, I am not a master myself in backgrounds, but I am still learning and I am still practicing and improving every day, and I wanted to show you or rather tell you guys and show you guys uh, my like the tips that I have gathered uh, from studying and uh, and from other artists and just typical things that I've picked up uh, to 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 just kind of like improve on backgrounds so um, let's get started so I'm gonna start the first tip with uh, some terminology and some techniques that I've picked up from looking at others and studying other things and so on and so forth and I'm gonna split it into two categories which is exterior so shots that are like all drawings that you want to take place outside and interior um, so things like a room uh, anything with uh, walls, four walls and a, and a door and possibly some windows and um, so let's start with exterior so the way that I like to imagine exteriors is to kind of imagine a set now like when you have like a set like or like a theater kind of set you have um when you when you have a theater kind of set you have the foreground which is you know stuff in front of you uh and then you have the middle ground uh like or like you have the foreground then you have the middle ground which is where the actors usually stand uh, and then you have a background, which is the thing that's painted onto the set behind you. Usually it could be things that are far away or it could just be a sky, depending on what sort of data set that you have. And the way that I always imagine exteriors is to use those three things. So I might uh, create like a little video to, to show this visually, but when you have um, a foreground, a middle ground, and a background and imagine it as some kind of set it gets easier to plan what kind of uh, what kind of things that you want in your full illustration and backgrounds because backgrounds aren't just um, things at the back I know I know what that means I know what that means that it's usually the stuff that's behind the person but that's not how images work that's not how like photography works or like just generally you have the subject in the middle uh, unless it's some unless it's a selfie you usually have um, the subject in the middle and then maybe you have some stuff in the front and then you have some stuff at the back and that creates a whole image and so when we talk about doing backgrounds we talk about the whole image so that's why when you look at it with the foreground middle ground and background and uh, and so on and so forth it gets easier to plan out your illustrations try to imagine it like a like a theater set like um like you know those like things that child like <laughs> you see in like anime and things like that where they have like the bushes in the front which is like a giant like green cloud but on the ground you that that's the foreground and then you have um the actors in the middle and then you have the set the back so um yeah that's pretty much how I imagine exteriors to be. Um, and then when you put them all together, it's one cohesive image. And um, the so moving on to inter moving on to interiors, what I usually like to do when I'm focusing in a room or a space is to draw a plan. It's to draw a plan of the room. What do I want in the room and so on and so forth. And use and then this method quite a lot of people use it is that you take that plan that you have and transform it into the perspective or the some people just look at it and then draw perspectively but I usually think it helps people when they're starting out to just take the plan that you just drawn which plan is really easy by the way it doesn't even have to be um, detail it just has to you just you just have to understand it you know uh, uh, this square could be the bed and you know that you know this square can be the bed this square can be the couch and so on and so forth you don't have to make a detailed plan you just need to make one that that fits you and once you have that you have a reference as to where everything in the room will be and you can draw a dot which would be where you would want the person to stand so then you will have a clear reference as to where all the things around them would go and um and sometimes it's it's it 
helps to transform the plan and and make it and fit it into the perspective that you want to do and then build it up from there in a lot of ways it's just a lot of cubes um but yeah so my personal my person why well not my personal but my tips for creating interior scenes is to create plans and then build them 3d from from the plans you know um just focus on like cubes <laughs> now i now i'm moving on to the second tip and i understand that what i said in the beginning is a lot of terminology and people you might still think that wow those are still really difficult to do how in the world am i going to do them well this is what the second tip is for is and my second tip is to don't be afraid to simplify don't be afraid to simplify if something is too complex if uh if this bookcase behind you is too if this you want to draw this bookcase behind and it's too complex don't be afraid to simplify it and stylize it there's a lot of things that when you type in how to draw this and how to draw that in um in deviant art they tend to give a lot of complicated things and it's okay to to stylize it and cartoon like and make it like simple you don't have to add details to every single book cover you have on the shelf you don't have to add things you don't have to add every single detail that scares you at first i think the most important thing when you're doing backgrounds or in anything to do with art is to just start doing them and so the second tip is don't be afraid to stylize and um and simplify it um simplify it stylize it and then you can build from there you know once you have a kind of basic knowledge of what you want of obviously the all the beginning backgrounds you're going to do are not going to be perfect but the more that you do it and the more that you gain that confidence and practice the more complex you can make the backgrounds behind you as as you as you gain more confidence in that area but yeah as when you're building that base it's okay to just to just stylize it and take reference from cartoons because cartoons typically have very simple backgrounds and um and there's and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that cartoons are are 100 valid and if you want to like base it off that you just want to draw like a like a really simple thing go ahead really it's fine no one is going to point at you and say hey you have an anime character but like your background is like is like is the wrong style like no one no one's gonna point that at you um you're just like starting you're just starting and if any and if anyone does that just block them or ban them or whatever because this is your art journey it it's going to take a while and you're not going to be perfect at it straight away but it's still yours and you will get better and you will improve so screw what anyone else would say you know and as soon as when you master like the stylized and simplified version and you want to expand and you want to try something a little bit more detailed you can that's entirely up to you and not up to anyone else to decide and tip number three is um don't be afraid to cheat there are many 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 brushes on clip paint studio clip paint studio is a is a program that i recommend there are brushes for literally everything in the world on clip paint studios free asset website and uh, if you don't want to paint every single leaves you can find a leaf brush and just and just do that and like it's like you know don't be a, don't be afraid to cheat people cheat all the time in art people people use um people use um shortcuts all the time because hey you want to get something done and you and you just have to do it you 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 can't just you know like you no one is expecting you to draw every single individual leaf on a tree because that's too many leaves so clip paint studio as well has lots and lots of assets that you can use brushes and so on and so forth but what so, uh, a thing that Clip Paint Studio has that no other program has, art drawing programs, is that they also have 3D models. And if you wanted to use like something as like a cube or a base in a 3D space, you can just pluck anything that they have from their from their free asset site 
and put it straight onto the picture just to see what where it would go and how much space it would take up like if you want to use those models go ahead like i said don't be afraid to cheat don't be afraid to use those those are there for you to use um no one is no one is going to think of you any less because you're using um if you're using brushes or models or so on and so forth and web comic artists and comic artists actually use models to try and get their work done faster and who could blame them honestly because people want updates to the comics like ASAP so yeah don't be afraid to cheat there are so so many amazing brushes and models on Clip Paint Studio and they will help you get to where you want to be and um and yeah that's basically it. That's basically all the tips that I had for um, for the background videos. Um, there are obviously more things, more nitty. There are more things in the nitty gritties. There's more technical things like perspective and so on and so forth. But that's a much more expansive topic, and I don't know if I can cover it in these just three small tip videos. Um, um, I just wanted to simplify and summarize for anyone that just wanted to start off making backgrounds and um, and I have also talked in another video I will put it here maybe about how I used um, gacha cards <laughs> I used the mobile gacha cards because they tend because you are uh, special ultra rare cards tend to have backgrounds behind them and and use that same foreground middle ground and background technique and I tend to use those as references when I wanted to when I wanted to start making backgrounds for the first time so yeah um, that's about it I hope you guys enjoyed this video this was a little bit nervous nerve-wracking to do but I wanted to share because I'm not an expert but hey together we'll work together and we'll improve together and that's really all that we can do together so I hope you guys enjoyed it if you have any questions leave them in the comments below if anyone would like me to do a perspective video I'm not the best at them but I can try and um, and I'll see you guys in the next video bye